All right, everybody, we are recording now. Welcome to our weekly gathering for Inner Space Journeys. This is our weekly free gathering for seekers, explorers, um, path walkers, light workers, whatever, <laughs> whatever title you like to um, give to yourself. These are just open exploration. This is really about, you know, I'm I'm generally intuitively guided to a topic or a focus um, for for the day. Um, and I share that, you know, a couple of days before or as soon as I get it. And then we dance with this idea. We dance with this energy. We begin with some opening ideas and thoughts and some channeled insight that I will share. Um, sometimes we have time for um, question and answer or discussion, though I find that a lot of times that actually that running commentary in the chat actually has a tendency to kind of bring everything together. And I find that most questions are answered by the time we reach that point. But if we have the time and if we feel that there's a need, we can open it up for discussion. And then, as always, we'll close out with some beautiful guided um I call it just guided energy work. It's sort of like a guided meditation, but it's energy work. And it's really, really, really lovely. So, you know, just understand that you're not required to participate beyond just sitting and listening. You certainly can participate in other ways if you feel inspired to do so. Um, you can raise your hand once we get to the Q&A. You'll see in the bottom of your screen on your little toolbar is a lower hand and raise hand button. That's a great way to get my attention if there's something that you would like to share or offer or ask for support on. Having said all of that, let's change. There we go. Um, what I... Right there we go. Wanted to talk about today was this idea of healing and transformation. You know, one of the the things that my guides, myself, really have been talking about, and one of the consistent threads through my work and through my own journey, through my own awakening, is this idea that healing moves us backwards. And that transformation moves us forwards. And the idea is, in many ways, I think sometimes it's kind of hard to grasp. But if we think about what are we usually healing, right? Or when we go into a healing space, or even when we go to the doctor, right? And we need to be healed. Something's broken. Something's wrong. Something needs help or needs fixed. And so what we're looking for is to return to the state where it wasn't broken where it didn't hurt, where I wasn't traumatized, or whatever the, the thing is. But ultimately, the desire with healing is to reach a place that we perceive we are not, right? Super simple example, my arm is broken. I want to return my arm to the state where it was not broken. That's, I think, a very, very clear idea of healing, at least physically. I think it can give a little bit tricky sometimes when we're talking about emotional healing or we're talking about psychological healing, healing that doesn't necessarily have a physical manifestation in terms of like, oh, I can see you have a cut or I can take your temperature and see you have a fever. Now, certainly emotional traumas and emotional wounds are absolutely 100% without a doubt always going to show up in the body. They are always going to manifest as some sort of physical symptom. And I think that what we have been doing historically for the past several hundred years, at least in the Western world, is we've been turning symptoms into disease. From my perspective, all disease is a symptom of one thing, and that is disconnection. In some way, we have become disconnected from our ideal state, i.e. the state where we are whole, where we are healed, where we are unified, where nothing is broken. The irony of all of this is that you don't really need to be healed. At its core, healing is simply total and complete unconditional love for all that is. And when I say all that is, I mean absolutely all that is. Unconditional love for all that is, is an either or thing. It's like being pregnant. You either are or you aren't. You're not kind of pregnant. You're not kind of having unconditional love for all living things and all that is. You either are or you aren't. And that is not a judgment. That is simply a statement of fact. This total and uncon complete unconditional love, not only is that inclusive of those people over there, 
it's also inclusive of you. Healing oftentimes creates this version of reality where we become an adversary with ourselves, right? Oh, if only my body wasn't broken, if only I wasn't in pain, if only I hadn't had such shitty parents, right? We find a lot of reasons to justify why. But the truth is, is that you are already whole. All of us are. There is a layer of self always and eternally that is never having, ex having an experience of brokenness. It may have an experience of allowing itself to believe that it's broken. Like, let's say my higher self or the higher self is up there going, wow, Amar is really invested in his belief that he's broken or there's something wrong with him. That's what it feels like. But my higher self never believes that I am broken. It never joins me or invests itself in my beliefs of unworthiness, of brokenness, of being unlovable, of being a sinner, or whatever the thing is. Interestingly, if we look at the word heal from an etymological standpoint, the Germanic origins of heal and whole, as in W-H-O-L-E, are very, very similar. They're almost identical. So this idea of healing is simply to be inclusive of the whole self. When I say you don't need to be healed and that you are ready all are already whole, it's true. Whether or not you believe it, whether or not you understand that or even comprehend it doesn't mean that it is false. It is true. Now, you can choose to believe that, you can choose to fight that, you can choose to deny it, as most of us do. But the truth is, is that any time you could simply surrender and allow yourself to be unified with yourself, capital S, Pop, done, unified, ascended, integrated. Bye. <laughs> I'm done here, right? But the truth is, is that most of us, and we've also been sold this idea, but most of us love the story that struggle equals success. Because that helps us justify continuing to believe in the stories that perpetuate our struggle, right? We tell ourselves like, oh, just keep going. Just one more step. You're almost there. It's going to be worth it. So we love the struggle because what it does is it also creates a linear experience, right? I was born, then I was traumatized, then I became an adult, and then I had an awakening, and then I began to repair and heal and rehole myself, whatever. So the other piece is that from our human perspective, we love the process of remembering how to liberate ourselves. We love the process of remembering how to recall the truth that I am an infinite eternal aspect of the creator itself, that I am creation. So there is a point to the idea of struggle. And Eckhart Tolle, one of my favorite quotes is, struggle is necessary until you realize that it's not. In a similar vein, Paul Selig's guides say, every being comes here with a list of things they want to learn. And some of you are going to learn how to bake a cake in a five-star kitchen. Some of you are going to learn how to bake a cake in the gutter. The end result is the same, you learn. And that's another one, Catherine, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And the truth is we're immortal, so nothing can kill you. You say, but, but this could, no, no, it could kill your body, but you are not your body. So nothing can kill you. Try walking around with that idea at the forefront and the center of your consciousness for a week. So the process of how to remember that you are whole, the process of how to remember that you are eternal is valuable to some of us. So the struggle for some of us is the value itself. Some beings come here to experience perpetual struggle. If you lived in paradise and you heard all these people talking about this thing called struggle, but you live in paradise, so you have no experience with that because you're never divided or separate from yourself. So there's no way for struggle to even become an experience. And you become curious about it. Well, I don't know what that is. In my reality, I think about, boom, there it is. I think about it, boom, there I am. I think about it, there it's done. But what if I wanted to process? What if I wanted to struggle? What if I wanted a mountain to climb? Then you would come and you would have the experience of forgetting 
and you would dance with this amnesia and you would dance with letting other people tell you who you are and other people tell you what is true. And that would be useful for a while. And of course, in a society where tribalism is such a huge part of it, right? You don't want to be left alone. You don't want to be out in the cold. You don't want to be excluded. Oh, you don't want to be like those people over there. So we choose to separate ourselves in a myriad of ways. All for the experience of coming back to unification. We also have this belief, and here's a key, key, key component to this. The belief that struggle is necessary, that it's noble, that the only valid way to learn is through struggle. And that belief system is what makes it so. It's valuable because we invest ourselves in it. It's like money. Objectively, money is a pile of printed paper or manipulated metal. That's it. That's it. It only has value because we believe that it does. That's it. This could be money. This could be money. Oh, a blue one. This one's more expensive than the yellow one. This one's worth more than the green one. This could be money. Why not? What's the difference? So it all comes down to belief. And the difference between healing and transformation is that healing moves us backwards and that is necessary. Once I awaken to the truth that maybe things aren't as I've been told they are, maybe I'm not the worthless piece of crap that everyone has been telling me are, right? We start to question our programming. We start to question our indoctrination. We start to question what we have been told or sold is true. And so we begin to pick things apart. And then we realize, oh my God, that thing that happened when I was 10. Oh my God, that thing that happened when I was five or even in utero. Oh my God, that thing that happened, whatever. So we go back essentially to rescue ourselves. We become our own doctor. It is my job to tend to the parts of me that are still fractured and fragmented and stuck in a traumatic loop. And once I go and bring them to the light, to the center, to the truth, which is now, that's all now is, that's all the light is, is now, that's all the truth is, is now, that's all creation is, is now, that's all love is, is now. It's all just another word for now. And when I can go back in time, and bring myself forward and bring myself forward and integrate and heal and release and embody and finally realize myself as the being that I am, or in some cases, the being I have been. And now all of us is in the center. And I'd say 50% of us kind of stop. Actually, I'd say 80% of us stop there. We stop at healing because that's a story, right? Oh, I'm a survivor of this disease. I am a survivor of this horrible event. I am a survivor of this trauma. And there's nothing wrong with surviving. Let's hope we can even make it to thriving. But the truth is, is that even the role of the survivor is rooted in the trauma. So I'm still defining myself by the state of separation. Transformation requires, because transformation moves us forward. Healing is for the human. Healing is your opportunity to recall your natural state of endless compassion and infinite unconditional love. You are being given an opportunity to remember how to model yourself in your human form after the form that you are. Do you understand? The only reason we ever have a traumatic human experience is so that we can recall our ability to heal. And once we reach that state of mostly healed, here's another piece, like little side note, little footnote. As long as you're in a physical body, there's always going to be work to do. Because in and not even a physical body, as long as you are an emanation outside of the one, there is work to do. 
But at some point you wake up and let's just say for, you know, the ease, the easiness of it, that you're 51% healed and 49%. So you're already over the hump, right? The majority of you is in a state of being healed, is in a state of being whole. So what do we do then? Most of us walk around and like to tell the story of our healing journey. We like to tell the story of the thing that brought us to healing. And most of us stop there. But that's not why we came this time. We came this time to move into transformation. And transformation is for the entirety of self with the capital S. Transformation moves you forward. That's all it can do. Transformation can't transform your problem unless you're willing to drop it. Some of us become so terrified and of identity without trauma or pain or suffering or disease that we even hang on to that. Oh, yep, survivor. Oh, yep, this. Oh, yep, I did that. So I'm still in the same reality. I'm just now on the outside of it looking in. But I haven't moved myself beyond where I was. Transformation says it's time to move beyond. Transformation says that's a singular volume in a much larger series. That is one chapter, one sentence in a paragraph. For me, that was the, switch, the turning point when I changed my name to Amar because the pivot from the experience of Andrew into one of Amar, I saw how limited the idea of Andrew was, and mostly by other people's definitions. The idea of Andrew just came with a whole bunch of assumptions and implications that were no longer true. So what's the easiest way to get rid of all of those? I'm not Andrew anymore. Andrew exists within a larger framework. Andrew is here and always will be. But to pull one set, one volume out of a set of encyclopedias, for those of you old enough to remember encyclopedias, and saying that that's all the information there is just isn't true. So to look at yourself in the mirror and say, this is all that I am, just isn't true. To look at yourself historically and say, well, that's all that I am, just isn't true. It never has been and it never will be. Now, your free will gives you the ability to create a version of reality where you think that it is true, where you live as if it is true, but it does not change the objective fact that you are more than that. So suffering is only necessary until it's not. So when you find yourself perpetuating suffering, ask yourself, what's the value here? Why do I enjoy suffering? Why do I like suffering? Why does suffering make me feel at home? Because we all do it. Oh my God. Why did she just date the same exact guy as she, the, the last one? Why did he stay in that job that he hated for 20? It's because it's all you know. Until you begin to consciously dismantle your impulses, your belief systems, and your patterns of thought and behavior, you will just continue to be a prisoner of your indoctrination. But when you say, wait a minute, is this all there is? Is that actually true? When did I start to believe that? That's when the objective reality begins to reveal itself. And the truth is, is that objectively, 99% of this physical reality is meaningless. It's simply a prop. It is simply a stage set. And you are the one that gets to decide what it means. That's the whole point. So healing moves us backwards. Transformation moves us forward. And then there's another piece that we need to introduce here. And that's our friend chaos. What role does chaos play? Interestingly, I find that chaos is often what pulls us into healing, right? When I have a physical thing that I've just been ignoring and it starts to create all sorts of havoc in my system and my system is reaching a place where it can no longer on its own manage it, that creates chaos. Suddenly I go, wait a minute, something's wrong. I need to go to the doctor. Even if something as simple as a little pimple, that's a chaotic eruption. That is the body saying something isn't balanced here. So chaos becomes a friend when we allow ourselves to dance with it and say, why are you here? 
chaos also often propels us forward into transformation. When things just become so intense that I just can't take it one more second, that's when I finally decide. But the truth is, you have always been the thing that you just realized that you are. And that's the irony of it, is the being that you are wanted to come here and forget itself so that it could, through you, understand and come to a remembrance in a way that has never been done before. Transformation propels us beyond. It is where things get real. Transformation is where it's not just a really cool saying that I have on a poster, or it's not just a book that's on my shelf that I read that inspired me. It's not just a mantra or a tattoo or a hashtag anymore. Now I got to live it. Now I got to walk around with that, navigating the world as one who understands the truth. And that, I have, I have yet to meet a human who is not terrified on some level as living as their authentic self. But when you realize that most people aren't paying as much attention to you as you think they are, because they're so worried about what their own inner turmoil is broadcasting to the world, they're not even paying attention. So it's alchemy in real time to take, you know, the idea of alchemy was turning lead into gold. It was taking something that was heavy and dense and not so useful and turning into something that is elevated and shiny and bright and golden and glittering and of more use or of greater power. Most, like most humans, we took this idea of alchemy and we turned it into a literal interpretation. Very well could be a way to turn lead into gold. I don't know. But the idea of alchemy is really about your spiritual transformation. It is about taking what you were given through your human experience and turning it into something that is intentional that is on purpose, that is deliberate and a conscious choice. So it's not to say that you're never going to do things that aren't 100% you. I mean, radical self-expression is exactly that. It's quite radical. And for most of us, it takes a minute to ramp up to that. But just like you don't need to be healed, you could surrender it all and unify and bam, there you go. You could also come to that understanding of yourself and you could allow yourself to be radically fully self-expressed and then see what happens but most of us are really afraid of that and so we go through it one little bite at a time and i think that that's a healthy way to do it in many ways especially at the beginning because what we need to do is make it mindful we need to do it in a way that we can understand it so that we can repeat it recreate it and then share it So it is an alchemical process. There is magic here. You call it physics, I call it magic. So in many ways, healing is tending to an unraveling who we were. And whether that was a belief that I inherited or adopted or just made up, doesn't matter. And at some point, we decide that we are going to integrate that history and release it so that we can transform. And transformation is essentially allowing myself to become what I have always been. So it's kind of maybe a little deflating to reach a point in the journey where you realize like, oh, I didn't have to go through any of that. But would I have reached that realization if I didn't go through that? I mean, it's the chicken and the egg. It is, Catherine. It's so ironic. And I've been singing that freaking Alanis Morissette song all week. <laughs> Isn't it ironic? She should have done a lyric. It's like waking up, you know, thinking you're not a powerful creator and then realizing you are. I don't know. It's a great song. But, you know, this idea 
I think of healing as a badge of honor, I think what that can also do is perpetuate a version of reality where there's always something to fix. There's always something to heal. And I have seen this time and time again through my work. Many people hide out in healing. Because if I always have something else to work on or do, then I never have to move beyond. Then I never have to try. Then I never have to take the leap. Then I never. And many people turn discomfort and physical comfort, in, physical suffering into a comfortable space. Now, comfortable doesn't mean, ooh, I like it like a big, soft, fluffy bed. Comfortable just means I understand it. And there are no surprises. I see it all the time. Disease of the week, ailment of the day, problem of the month. Maybe I should start like a new subscription service, problem of the month club. Just send me 10 fucking bucks and I'll create a problem for you every month. And it'll be shipped to your door on the first of the month. And then you can be satisfied that, yay, I have at least another month's worth of problems to work on so that I don't have to get to living. Because what's on the other side of healing? Living. Being. Just being. Because here's the thing, if you already are what you've been aspiring to be, then why would you do anything other than just be what you are and have always been? There's another piece here. Healing is for the mind. Healing is for the mind to witness it. Because that's one of the key parts and key components of having a physical experience means that you must take physical action, right? The physical act of doing is our human way of signifying what I know and what I've received and what I've connected to. You want to see the type of consciousness that people are tapped into? Watch how they behave and act. Because there is not one action that has ever been taken in the history of actions been taken that the person did not believe in that moment that it was the best thing that they could do. Why am I going to go bomb that country? Oh, because they're heathens. That's how I justify it. So I'm just the hero of my story. It always comes down to belief. This is valuable because I believe it is. Aside from physical characteristics, show me the difference between this and a piece of money. The only difference is that we believe one is valuable over the other. That's it. So what are you healing, really? You're healing what you believe. That's why these religious organizations, and this is deep South stuff, but there are documented cases of people who are in a religious fervor, drinking poison, getting bitten by snakes, and they have no physical effect. That's how powerful the mind is. So at some point, we just decide, do I really believe this anymore? And that is the realm of power because beliefs are completely disposable and interchangeable. And the way that we can shore up our beliefs is either by allowing the external reality to continue to show me what is true, or I rest in what I know is true and consistently choose that and become allegiant to that truth. And then guess what? This out here has no choice but to change to match this. We just love to make it really, really hard. 
So if you find yourself and when you are at that point where you start to feel like this is just not true, this is not, why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep thinking that? Why do I keep believing that, right? Why do I keep seeking that? It's not just true. That is the point of power. Because when you are aware of the fact that there's a pattern that's not so healthy or undesirable, what you are doing is putting yourself in observance of that pattern and you can only observe things that you are not. The ocean doesn't know itself as the ocean. The ocean cannot observe itself. It can only know itself as the wave. Source cannot know itself as source because there is nothing for it to reflect upon. The only way source knows itself is through the individuation of you, of me. Yeah, your eye cannot look at, your, look at itself and you can't stick your elbow in your ear. Those are two truths of the human condition. Oh, and nothing rhymes with orange. So what are we all doing here? If you're already healed and you already are what you have been trying so hard to be, then what's the point? If anyone has any answers. <laughs> The point really, Catherine, and I would love the answer too, but really in its purest sense, you came simply to know yourself in a way that you had never known yourself before. There is one consciousness. And it has decided to fractalize and fracture itself into a million infinite different perspectives. Yeah, that's a good one, Nicole. <laughs> Don't stick anything smaller than your elbow in your ear. Yes, Daniela, that's it. To become who you are not who you have been told you are or who you're supposed to be, to be the most free and liberated and fully expressed version of you that you can be. That's it. Spoiler alert, that's your purpose. What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to feel good. You're supposed to find the things that make you feel lit up. You're supposed to find the things that move you beyond. And maybe you decided to have an experience where that would elude you throughout all of eternity. Maybe you had decided to have an experience where it just shows up immediately. But here's the thing. You always have authority and you always have agency. Yes, you came here to learn, but you can say, you know what, self, you know what, spirit, I am so done of learning through frustration and lack. I want to learn through fulfillment and abundance. You can. Ooh, and I just felt it. I felt it come in. When I said that you can learn through joy and abundance, at least half of you, oh, but no, but struggle. Oh, but being a human. Oh, that's hard, but no pain, no gain. Okay, fine, if you insist. I fucking felt it. And I understand it. Why? Because I have more evidence of my struggle than I do of my liberation. And we love to believe, right? Well, I can't, I can't see it. I've never seen that. It's not true. Well, have you ever seen a trillion dollars all in one place? No. Doesn't mean it's not true. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Show me. Show me love. Show me Wi-Fi. Show me gravity. There are all sorts of things that we can't see that we invest ourselves in. So at some point, we have to be bigger than ourselves. At some point, we have to stand up to ourselves and say, you know what, babe, I love you. But for the past 30-something, 40-something, 50-something years, you've been telling me all of these horror stories, none of which have come true, by the way. So... 
you have a choice. You always get a seat at the table. But if you want me to hear you and listen to you and regard your suggestions, you're going to drop the emotional terrorism. You always get a seat at the table. But whether or not I value your input is up to me. All opinions are valid, but I get to decide how much value they hold. So at some point, we just have to be willing to turn to ourselves and say, my dear, that's just not true. And I'm not going to live according to that belief anymore. Because it's not true. It never has been. This is one of my favorite exercises, and I talk about this a lot. Today, if you were to write down a list of all your worst fears and then mail it to yourself through the snail mail, like mail yourself a letter and don't open it for six months, I guarantee you in September 24th of this year, you're going to read that letter and you're going to see that none of it came true. And if it did, it would never occur without you having what you needed to contend with it. It's not the disease we fear. It's the diagnosis that we fear. It's what we think the disease means is what we fear. So healing requires me to stay put and connected to history in some way. Transformation says you can now stand on the foundation of your healed self, of your healing, because now you have remembered how to be your own source of safety, of well-being, of compassion and love. And that's what you stand on now. So transformation moves you forward. And here's the thing. It's like puberty. It's a natural cycle. You don't have to do anything to activate it. You simply have to allow it to occur. It's a natural part of the process. Because geometrically, once you are in a space where your geometry is clear and crystalline enough, it is no longer sustainable in a lower density. It just can't do it. It's like you walking on the bottom of the ocean. You need some sort of apparatus so that you can do that. Because the, the bottom of the ocean is not your natural, not your native state, right? It's not your natural, authentic environment. Neither is earth. That's why we have a body. Our body is our scuba suit. Our body is what allows us to navigate through an environment that is not our native state, not our native setting. So you need it, but it's not what you are. And so when your geometry begins to reform and reshape itself in your divine template, it will create a moment where your emanation and your frequency is no longer supported by your environment of a lower density. So it will just pop you up. And if you resist the popping up, that's when Agent Smith starts coming for you. Things only get uncomfortable when it is necessary for them to be uncomfortable. It only becomes uncomfortable when you are no longer a vibrational match. I remember this was way, 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 way back, my 20s and 30s. When cattiness and judgment and my, my razor tongue was like a badge of honor. I loved that, you know, this verbal sparring that I could do. And I was so terrified of anyone seeing me vulnerable, of anyone seeing me sensitive, that I just directed all sorts of bullshit around me, just trying to isolate myself. And that geometry was so lopsided and so dense and so heavy and so uncomfortable. It took me years to excavate myself out of that. 
But when I would meet somebody, when I was in that state of self-loathing, frustration, anger, hated myself, so much unresolved stuff. And I would encounter someone who was very loving and very open and very, and it would repulse me. I found it's, I am telling you, if Andrew of 30 years ago were to walk into any of these spaces that I inhabit on a regular basis now, he would throw up in his mouth. Ugh, all that self-love. Oh, fucking hippies, take a shower. God, I was so cruel and critical. But it was only because I hated myself so much that in the face of someone who actually loved themselves, it was so excruciating for me to look at where I was hating myself that the only thing I knew how to do was criticize that person, make them the problem. I was so misaligned with that vibration of self-love that in its presence, it would make me physically sick. It's the same thing. When you begin to heal and awaken to your true nature and repair yourself, the environment that supported your sickness will be intolerable. And if you somehow manage to double down on your suffering, then that environment will have no choice but to become so volatile that it will push you out. To anything, Daniela, you want to know what your vibrational match is? Look around your life. Look at the things that happen consistently. Look at the things that happen all of the time. Look at the things that never happen. We live in a frequential reality. Everything vibrates. And if it vibrates, it has a sound. And if it has a sound, it can be measured. So everything is just vibrating. Everything is just sound and frequency. And it's just like the television or the radio. There are a whole lot of horrible, awful things happening on TV. There are a whole lot of wonderful, hilarious, magnificent things happening on TV. And all of them are happening simultaneously. And the only thing that guarantees what you will experience is the frequency that you tune into. When something is true, it is true at all levels. Right, we see that with our bodies. We see that with sacred geometry. The same shape that governs my bodily geometry also governs the trees and the rivers and the rocks. The same shapes are found in every single living thing. Even some things that aren't living. So we're always vibrating. And we're always calling to us or repelling from us the things that are a match or are not. So from that sense, if all I do is tend to my vibration, healing happens on its own. Life wants to be lived. Life is here to thrive. That's why we're here. The mind is the thing that gets in the way of it. Oh, don't do that. You were told that this was the way to do it. Oh, don't do that. That's not how you do it. But if the thing that you do always results in you being frustrated or disappointed or disillusioned, why do we keep doing it? And here's another piece. There's no shame in staying in a healing state. There's nothing wrong with saying, I don't think I'm ready for that. I'm not ready to leave the security blanket or the comfort zone of my identity as the survivor or the one who is struggling or broken. And sometimes it is that very journey of struggle that we need to get us to the point where we're ready to surrender the struggle. So if there's part of you that says, I want that, but I don't know how to get it, or that scares me, then you turn towards that part and you say, talk to me. Let's talk about that. Let's massage that. Let's persuade that. It's not the decision to liberate yourself that is to be second guessed. It's the part of you that's second guessing the choice to be liberated that needs your attention. Stop gaslighting yourself. Your desire to be free 
is not crazy. You're just being held back by the parts of you that have no experience of freedom. It's the same parts of you that if you decided to go, you know, live in the south of France for a year and you don't speak a lick of English, same parts of you go, I don't know how to speak French. I don't know how to speak. I don't know what the, right? So you're just going to be afraid. There's always going to be part of you that's afraid of something it doesn't know. Or that something that it hasn't experienced. It's like the kid on the first day of school. I don't know who I'm going to meet. I'm afraid. I'm scared. What if they're mean? What you know? But you still you go right. So yes, Nicole, that's how frequencies change. Is you just tune into a new radio station, and the way that you do that is by beginning to ask yourself, Am I not tired of listening to this song? I've heard this song every single day of my life. I don't want to hear that song anymore. And the minute that you become aware of it, it instantly begins to transform. Because remember, you can't observe something that you, you can only observe something that you are not. So I become aware of puberty because I am no longer a toddler. So I can observe that my body is changing. I can observe that, wow, that's different. So chaos and transformation, chaos and healing, they're all part of the same matrix, but they each have their own specific intention. And healing will never imply anything other than something is broken. And when it's broken, it's broken. You got to tend to it, right? Like, oh, my arm is broken. What is this a sign of? Can you? I need to book a session with you so you can tell me what this broken arm means. It means go to the fucking doctor. <laughs> There's no sign. There's no hidden cryptic message there. It means go take care of yourself. So finding your center. And in the beginning, if you find yourself butting up against beliefs that seem really stubborn or really chronic, don't break your back trying to change the belief or force the belief. Just make more room for the other voices to come in. Right? I'm not trying to get rid of the critical, shadowy, negative self. I'm not going to turn myself into my own adversary. I'm just going to balance that energy by bringing in the part of me that believes in possibility and miracles and potential. I'm going to balance the disempowered part of me by bringing in the part of me that understands my power as a creator. If I need more masculine energy, I don't get that by trying to be less feminine. I just open myself up to receive more of that masculine frequency. So then we bring a balance to it. So wherever you are on your journey of healing and transformation, and it is a loop, right? Like I said, there's always going to be stuff to heal. But the difference is, is as you proceed down your path, it becomes less of a hindrance. It becomes less of a red flag. Oh my God, 911 panic. My face is on fire. You learn to take it in stride and you go, oh, okay. There's just a part of me that needs a little nuance, needs a little massage, needs a little love. Oh, there's something that kind of got under the radar. I just wasn't paying attention. It slipped in. We got, you know, it's, a, it's an easy thing. This is what I'm going to say it again. This is why your daily practice is so important. When you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. It's like when I was a kid and my mom hired a house cleaner and she would come every other Monday after work. And so Sundays were always spent in a panic cleaning the house before the house cleaner. And I never understood that. Like, why are you cleaning that? You're hiring someone to come clean the house. Why are you cleaning it before? Look, if you clean the house a little bit every single day, you don't ever have to have a full day of cleaning. If you stay close to your center and yourself and give yourself even just five minutes a day of stillness and silence with anything but your own voice and your own frequency, then when I really need it, it's there. So we first begin some, simply by looking around at our reality objectively. 
and asking ourselves a very simple question, how did this get here? And it's only gonna be one of two things, consciously or unconsciously, that's how it got here. You either asked for it on purpose or you let it in by default. And I understand, especially in the beginning and especially in times of great stress or great frustration or fear to hear someone say, well, it's your choice, you created it. I understand how disempowering that can first seem. But once you get over that initial cold water to the face and you really look at it objectively, that is liberation because if you created where you are, you can create it again. You are already a gold star, blue ribbon, a number one manifester. You are so good at manifesting that you even gave yourself an experience where you could believe that you didn't know how. Yep. And it all starts with the feeling. It all starts with the vibration and the frequency. And sometimes we have one of our little selves that just gets all jacked up on anxiety and caffeine and just goes running and we have to chase it and go after it and pull it back. So yeah, there are moments of, oh my God, what's happening? Oh my God, go back to the old ways. Oh my God, the comfort zone, where is it? Oh my God, I'm afraid. Okay, fine, let yourself be that for the moment. And then come back to the center. Really, in the purest way, I think it's just about becoming so clear that you can allow life force energy and your own experience to move through you completely unhindered. No resistance, just allow, just observe, just be with, just witness and be present. Just let it move through you. No catch, no resistance, no block. And when I can let myself just be home in my body, in my experience, and allow it all just to move through me. Yep, that's it, Catherine. Whenever pain is present, you'll create from there first. We always do. And another you know, word for pain is illusion. So whatever it is that's floating on the surface of your belief system, that's what keeps getting in the way. That's what keeps mucking it up. It's the unresolved thing. Because here's the truth, and I've been saying this a lot too, right? Your baggage, your stuff doesn't weigh anything because it's innate, it's innate to who you are as a being. So you just don't think about it, right? But the only thing that holds you back, the only thing that weighs you down, the only thing that's heavy or burdensome are things that do not belong to you. That can be a belief, that can be a pattern, that can be a way of navigating. But transformation requires our total vulnerability. Because it requires us to stand completely free from artifice completely free from the impulse to perform and sing for our supper. Because the only claim the divine has ever made is I am. And the free will that we have all been granted is what we put after the words I am. That is the purest use of your free will. And the words that we state and that we operate under have power. Especially when they trigger a belief. 
Have you ever had one of those moments where you're feeling really good, really elevated, really high, really clear, really free, whatever it is. It's just one of those moments where you're like, oh yes, I remember, this is who I am, this is what I am. And then something happens, an old memory, someone says something, you're triggered or activated into something and boom, 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 boom. Suddenly within a matter of seconds, you are back in this state. All that is, is you step through the portal of your belief. A belief is a portal. Whatever that belief is, is the doorway to the reality where that is true. So all you ever have to do is simply stop and go, what about me has to be true in order for this experience to sustain? Look at it from the perspective of a screenwriter. What about this character has to be true in order for this character to continue to put up with this stuff. And what do so, much, so many of us say? Oh, well, that's just life. That's how it is. That's just being a human. If you say so. More importantly, if you believe so. Yes, Catherine, that's it. That's why we dive in to those inner waters so that we can stir them up. And when we stir them up, inevitably, anything that doesn't belong will simply float to the surface. And all you have to do is look at it. Well, hello. What's going on, my little friend? What do you want me to know? What's your message? What's the point? What's the purpose? Why are you here? And it'll say, well, I'm here because you're unlovable. Oh, well, that's interesting. Tell me more. And it's a part of us, you know, whatever it is, right? It's just the part of us that perpetuates that state because that's where we're at home. That's what we understand. That's what we believe. You can do that. I mean, Catherine, ancestral healing really is something that I see happens in reverse. When you heal yourself and you heal your story, because when you heal yourself, you heal your past. And when you heal your past, you change it. And so essentially what happens is you create a reality where you are now free from that context, to that history. And then as you free yourself from that, now that energy goes to the next person in line who was, you know, your mom or your dad. And then they are given the opportunity to say, yes, I accept this healing. And if they do, then it goes back to their parents and so on. So essentially what you're doing with ancestral healing is you're kind of lighting a fuse in reverse. It's like the explosion of your healing happens and then the fuse goes back through your history. It stops at your parents. Are you ready? Yes or no? Yes, okay. Mom is, but dad's not. All right, so we'll do the matrilineage. The patrilineage will just have to change, but or we'll have to, to wait, but it's not your responsibility anymore. So yes, you are healing in reverse. And yes, when you change your story, you change your history. And when you change your history, then all those who are a part of it also have the opportunity to choose that. But it's entirely up to them. And then some, this is another little wrinkle. Some of us did come with the permission of our ancestors to say, you will be healing on our behalf. So many of us are healing for our lineage, but the beauty there is we don't have to do anything other than just heal ourselves because it's already in agreement. So either way, you only have to work on your own stuff. That's why oftentimes in healing or even in like shamanic experiences, you give it back, right? You give the belief back to its source. You give the wound back to its source. You give the trauma back its source. And of course, we have to accept our responsibility for the role that we played. And then we release it and say, okay, I'm moving on. Now it's on you. You can decide what you want to do with it. So I want to make sure we have time for some inner work. So let's take two minutes. Can you find a comfortable spot, get some water, use the restroom, and then we will come back and we'll dive in. See you all in two minutes. Okay, everybody. So 
So we're going to switch into our inner work now. Um, again, making sure that any devices you're not using are in vibrate or airplane mode. There's one more thing I want to offer. And this was another one of the notes in the notes from the higher self book. Um, you know, everything is for you and everything is from you. This idea that you are just a being having a, an experience of knowing itself. And so in that way, everything serves you somehow. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so if you want to kind of fast track your experience, hang on one sec. Then for the next week, thank you, Catherine. By the way, there's my link. If you want to buy the book on Amazon notes from the higher self, a challenge to yourself would be that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, for the next seven days, you could start today if you wanted to. And we've got the full moon tomorrow. We've got the eclipse today. Like we are entering into a potent, potent time where we are really, really supported in radical magical works. And one of them would be to ask yourself, no matter what, how does this serve me? Because the assumption there is that it is for you, that it serves you in some way that it is a benevolent experience, oftentimes wrapped up in something that doesn't seem benevolent at all. But I promise you there is a purpose and there's a point and there's value. So if you ask yourself, how does this serve me? You immediately shift your experience from one that could be adversarial or stressful or tension or fraught. You immediately relax all of that, put yourself back in that authority, right? How does this serve me? me it's here for me it came for me it's seeking an audience with me see what happens all right make sure my laptop is do not disturb see look at me telling everyone to do it and i hadn't even done it myself <clears throat> all right everybody just sit back and relax breathing in nice and full and deep Just using that breath to slow everything down. There we go. It's a powerful thing that happens when we allow ourselves to fully anchor into now. The idea of time moving too quickly or time moving too slowly, that instantly collapses. When I'm projecting too far into the future, time seems to come to a halt. When I project too far into the past, it seems like time can't get away from me fast enough. So in these times where it feels like everything is moving a million miles an hour and there's so much going on in the world, the antidote to that is to actually stop running. Breathe. Allow and just be in the moment. Beautiful. So as you're breathing and coming into this moment, for that is all we have. Visualize yourself arriving in your inner temple, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe it's a building. Maybe it looks like something really old, like Hogwarts or some sort of Gothic architecture. Maybe it's in a natural setting. Maybe it's in a field. Maybe you see yourself in an atrium. Maybe you see yourself in a glass building. Maybe you see yourself simply in a structure in the middle of the woods. Whatever it is, this inner temple is your space. This is where you connect with you on all levels. This is where you can find your access to your inner selves, your connection to your guides, your angels, your helpers, even to source itself. There we go. So just breathe and arrive in that space. 
And as you move into your inner temple, find that seat of sovereignty, your throne of creatorship. And use that breath to bring all that you are into this moment. As you inhale, imagine that you are drawing all of your aspects from other dimensions, from other lifetimes, from other timelines, from other layers of reality. And all of it is present now moving through your experience. And as all that you are continues to arrive, see yourself expanding. The size of your field is relative to all that you are's presence. So as more of you arise, your field will simply continue to expand. You are infinite. You are endless. There is no limit to you and what you are capable of. There we go. Now allow all of that energy to move in, allow that truth and that wisdom from the multiple myriad of lifetimes that you have experienced through your soul. Allow all of that to arrive. And as you are continuing to assimilate and embody more of yourself with the capital S, See yourself holding yourself. What I mean by that is perhaps you imagine that you're holding a small child. Perhaps you imagine that there's a kid sitting on your lap. Perhaps you imagine you just wrap your arms around somebody, but it's you pulling yourself in. You can even outstretch your arms if it helps you to have the physical experience stretching your arms out as far as they can go and then surrounding all of you and pulling you close. There is not one part of you that is excluded from this embrace. This is the embrace of acceptance, of unconditional love. It is through this embrace that you validate all that you are. Simply pull yourself close. And feel as the resistance, as the fear, as the anxiety, as the uncertainty, as the doubt or the guilt or the shame, whatever it is, just feel how that dissolves just for a moment as you unconditionally accept all that you are and pull yourself close. Like the frightened child who just needs a moment of reassurance. To the person who just needs that moment of physical contact, of a hug, of an acknowledgement. Just pull yourself in. And you can say to yourself, I love you as you are. I accept you as you are. I allow myself to be all that I am, now as I am. <clears throat> Beautiful. And allow that merging, that weaving and braiding together of yourselves. And as all that you are comes into the room, we begin to see that it is all in perfect balance and harmony. It is only when I try to exclude part of myself that it becomes imbalanced. 
It's like a recipe. When all of the ingredients are present together, it makes sense. But if I abstract or remove one single part, it throws off the entire taste. The entire experience now is different. There we go. And now as you pull yourself into yourself and you feel that dissolution of the separation, you feel those walls crumbling and those partitions falling. Now lean back into your greater self. See that you too are an aspect of something that is much larger, much grander and much greater than the single experience. Allow yourself to be held, to be embraced by the benevolence that you are. Maybe it helps you to see this as a loving parental figure or someone that cares for you. Perhaps there's a deity, a being that you feel an affinity to. Whatever it is, whatever version of self is showing up to embrace you, allow yourself to be pulled in. Allow yourself to melt into all that you are. Understand that you can find your rightful place in the grander scheme of self. Like a sentence or a paragraph in a book, you are part of something that is much greater but that without you would be incomplete. Breathe that in. Feel that connection deepen. Understand that you are not separate from the higher self any more than the thumb is separate from the foot. You are both a part of a much larger system. And although perhaps it sometimes feels like you are separated, that you are on opposite ends, Nothing could be further from the truth. You are your higher self and your higher self is you. There is no separation. That is an important distinction to begin to integrate into your understanding. Now understanding that there is an even larger layer outside of your higher self that pulls all of you into it and on it goes as you continue to expand to the most outermost reaches, the outermost layers, the highest, highest heights of creation, of consciousness, of understanding. You are still connected to that. And just like in order to change the program on the TV, all I have to do is turn the channel. In order to change the reality you are viewing, all you have to do is change your frequency. And it's simply something you can allow. And if you choose, you can set the intention that this full moon and this eclipse portal, as you move into eclipse season, marks your shift into transformation. Trusting that anything that you still require will be with you. Trusting that everything was released, was ready to go, and that it was time. An understanding that even though you may not fully understand the why, you can choose to move on if you are ready.
and you can simply say spirit, self, I am ready to move across the threshold of healing into transformation. I invite and accept assistance, support, and reflection from the energies and information that are the most high. I allow myself to walk into the field of transformation with all that I am in support of this choice. And so it is. And just breathe. And trust that over the days and weeks to come, life will begin to simply place in front of you the experiences and the circumstances that are the most supportive on your journey of transformation. They may not support other people, but it is not for them. Other people may not understand your path, but it is not their path. Other people may not understand or approve of your choices, but they are not their choices. Ultimately, the only person that has to feel good about the choices that you make is you. Should you choose to include others, certainly that is okay. But to choose in the hopes that you are satisfying or fulfilling what someone else wants from you is a recipe for suffering. And remember that everything is for you. So no matter what, over the course of the next seven days, meet every moment of every circumstance with the question, how does this serve me? And you don't need to sit and wait for an answer. Sometimes the response comes as you move on without move on throughout your day. Sometimes the response comes as you ask the question and then just forget you ever asked it and just proceed. However the response comes, just know that it will. And then just come back to the breath. Breathing in nice and deep. Feeling the presence of your inner self still close and still with you. Feeling yourself still aligned and merged with your expanded aspects and on up the chain it goes. Like those nesting dolls, it's just a layer on a layer on a layer, but it's all part of the same object. You are all a part of the same being. Offering deep bows of gratitude to all of the energies and information, the beings and the helpers that came into support today. And as you breathe, coming back into the room, breathing as you come back into the body, fully present at this moment in time and take another deep breath. You have a good stretch. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. As always, 
these gatherings are free, but I did put the donation links in the chat there. There's a Stripe link and a PayPal link if you feel so guided. Oh, good, Catherine, some release. You know, I think tears, sometimes they feel just like a bodily function. And what I mean by that is I've been talking a lot about this lately, actually for a while now, but you know, where we are right now in this phase that we're in is the physical expression of a lot of the stuff that we've been dealing with mentally, emotionally, energetically, intellectually over the past few years. And this is our actual physical experience of embodying that. And like I said, like transformation means now I got to put this into action. Now I got to put this into play. I can't just talk about it or read it. Now I have to live it. And a lot of times the tears or the physical eruption of some sort of emotional experience is just really like a purge. It's just our body getting rid of things. So sometimes when I find myself emotional, obviously I'm going to stop, give myself the space that I need when I can or as soon as I can. And then I sit with it and I just kind of watch it. Sometimes I see that there's something actually that needs my attention that I, you know, there's some work I can do. Sometimes it's just being present with it, right? Sometimes it's just letting things happen. It's like a sneeze. Sometimes it just, the body just needs to expel something. So I let it. But regardless of why the tears are there, I think that's a good thing. Oh, good, Marty. I'm glad you found some activation here. So as always, I'll be posting this on uh, my YouTube channel. Um, oh, I also sent this out on my newsletter yesterday. Um, until further notice, let me just make sure I have the, uh, where did I put this? Um, I have all of my, um, uh, what's it called? My services are on, sorry, I'm just looking for, where did I put that? A discount on my services. Okay, that's gonna drive me crazy. I'll find it. Um, anyway, if I think it's Heal20. Yeah, Heal20. If you go to my booking calendar, use um, code Heal20 and that will give you 20% off any of my services except for the um, mentorship, but everything else, it gives you 20% off. So there it is. So right there, that link will take you to my calendar and just use heal 20, which is that at checkout. And that'll give you 20% off through the end of April. And then also through the end of March, those he, the new healing service, the divine frequency uh, healing is 50% off. And I believe that that's heal 50. Um, if, if you, if that's not the right code, anyway, the divine frequency healings are 50% off until the end of March. So just like the next week. And then through the end of April, everything is on sale, 20% off. Um, but if those aren't the right codes, just email me and I'll, I'll make sure you get the right ones. I think those are the right ones, but my brain is everywhere these days. So, <laughs> so try them and see. The Heal 50 is only for the Divine Frequency Healing and the Heal 20 is for all services except for the um, mentorship. Lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I just love these Sunday gatherings and I'm so happy you come. Um, if you're... If you know anybody who you think might be interested, please feel free to share the information with them. You can either just send them the Zoom link or forward the um, the newsletter. But I send out every Friday or Saturday, I'll send out whatever the theme is or the focus is for that weekend's inner space journey. So sign up for my newsletter if you haven't yet. Um, and everything that I share, um, I share through there. So that's always a good way to stay connected. YouTube is Amar Energy. Instagram is Amar Energy. Again, the playlists for these um, and the replays for this live on YouTube channel. So you can always go check them out. Thank you, everybody. So much love to all of you. I really, really appreciate you showing up. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next week. Have a good one, everybody.